All right, guys, it is here at last, the studio tour. Uh, so you're probably gonna see things are quite a bit different and kind of the same as they were before. It's, it's much more scaled down here. So to those of you who don't know, if you want to skip me blabbing, you totally can. You can get right to the part where I'm showing you all the gear. Um, we moved from Ohio down here to Nashville about two or three months ago at this point. And, um, you know, the other studio was a lot bigger and we're renting this house. So there's, it's pretty limited what we can do with this space. So we're working with what we got. And I think that we still have something that is really fun to be in, you know, to write music. And I thought at the end of the video, I would tell you guys something I've really learned from having different studios. And, um, yeah, so we're just gonna hop onto this one. This video is sponsored by the awesome people over at Sweetwater. If you would, check the links. I'm gonna list everything that I have here that's available on Sweetwater. It's all gonna be linked down below for you. If you wanna support the channel, it's a great, easy way to do that. And uh, I really do appreciate it. So that's all linked down below. Thank you to Sweetwater. Let's get into the studio tour. All right, we got some amps over here. Camera to all you camera nerds. The main talking head camera, which I didn't use today because uh, I'm using right now an A7S 3 This is the FX3 from Sony. Really, really good camera. I've got uh, the G Master lenses. This is the 24 to 70. What you're looking at, what we're looking through right now, is the um, it was a 16 to 35 on the A7S 3 Amps, we got the Origin. Really great affordable Marshall. JCM 800. This was actually my old guitar teacher's 800. I didn't know it when I first tried it out. And then at the local shop, Metronome Music, they're like, oh, that was Milo's old amp. So boom, check that out. Uh, Milo was one of the best guitar teachers I've ever had. So Milo, if you're watching this, man, you're awesome. Come over here, an Artist 3203, which belonged to not a guitar teacher, but just a friend of mine, Bill, back in Ohio. Uh, sold it to Metronome, same one that was selling the 800. I'm like, oh, that's Bill's amp? And actually, the Charvel that I have here was also Bill's. This is a wicked, wicked Rev Generator 120. Uh, of course, I got the 1x12. Uh, I've got one of those Tone Master, what is it, Super Reverbs. Really, really cool amp. Got the Oxbox, which I don't have hooked up yet. Uh, my buddy Corey Congelio is going to help me set that up. Uh, this stuff, I forget why we put this here. This is actually my son's. We were just filling the space, I think, when I was doing the most recent course. You gotta have your air filter, uh, you know, lamp over there. I mean, are you are you even are you even living if you don't have got the Explorer right there, the JBL monitors. This stuff's pretty much the same as it was uh, in the you know goodbye studio video that we did. So the only thing really different in here is I've got the Axfx3, which was at the home studio uh, and the Axfx2. Two notes still rocking it here. Scarlet 18i20. Uh, this is the song that you just heard. Look at that tune. Trusty Firebird going on there. Uh, I did whittle down some of the stuff I had here. I do have the Helix, which I'm gonna do a video on that here pretty soon. Super cool. There are just some things I don't I don't care for about it. But talk about later. Pig Cup, which is now empty. I mean, Pig Cup and air filter lamp. Two, two essential things. I mean, come on now. And of course we got the the racks of guitars here. These are the Stringjoy racks. I like them a lot better because they have this rubber, uh, which is safe for your finishes. But the, the strings used to get caught on these things all the time. It was so annoying. But guitars that you guys might like, of course the PRS DGT. Watch, we'll do this. Lay them on the floor. DGT, because that's where guitars belong, right? Um, I don't, have you guys seen this one yet? Cool. The Electro always makes the cool, funky stuff. Of course, my SG, the Squire, and I'll link all this stuff if you want to see like pictures of them. Uh, the Squire Jazzmaster. This thing is so cool. Such a good guitar. I don't think they make those anymore. I guess that was a special run or something. Maybe I'm wrong. My trusty gold top. This one uh, is an 89, so birth year guitar for me. I think I'm a couple months older than it. Uh, of course, the EVH Frankie uh, Ingvay Strat. A lot of people dig that one. Really cool stuff. I love the bullet truss rod on there. It's cool. The brass nut. Scout fretboard. It's, it's funky, but so cool. 
Another notable guitar. Man, this thing is just so inspiring. The Dan Electro 12 string. What a fascinating guitar. It's so cool. If you've not played one, these are relatively affordable, uh, you know, as to, compared to like the Fender 12 string or something like that. Really, really cool, man. Get your Jimmy Page on with that thing. Uh, and the, of course, like a 59, you gotta have one of those. Um, see the 57 Strat from the Vintage 2 line. Really, really good. It did get overshadowed by another guitar I'll show you soon. Les Paul Jr., I just did a video on that, so I'm not gonna pull it out. The Ultimate Super Strat, right here. The Friedman Cali. The other Ultimate Super Strat. My 1993 or 92, maybe it's a 92. Um, RG550, look at that thing. It has been loved on. This is the other guitar that I said was Bill's. Rachia, the Charvel. It's kind of, a, it's just a Mutt Charvel. It's one he pieced together. So it's not really like a particular model. It's kind of like a 3DR, almost like a Predator body and a Model 1 neck. And I think it's a custom, custom Duncan in there. And then that's the original neck pickup. I can't totally remember, but cool guitar regardless, right? Just got a tiny neck on it. It's hard, hard for me to play. It hurts my, hurts my thumb. Now this is of course the telly. I keep blabbing about, I should do like an absolutely dedicated video to it, but I'm also pretty lazy. So who knows, but it's basically like a 63, um, American Vintage 2. That's what it is. I left it stock. I'm thinking about putting a G-Bender in it. So if you guys would like to see that video, I'm going to see if I can talk the guys down at Glaciers to let me record that whole thing too. And then, of course, we got to talk about this. I was going to play some of these, but I think I won't. Just because we'll be here all day. Yep. The good old trusty 79KM. Groon's actually got one of these in not too long ago. Uh, and it's gone. Someone bought it. It was, it was cool. It was a little bit cleaner than mine. And then I only keep a couple of guitars in cases. Um, I don't really believe in having too many case guitars. I do keep my my Strat in here, my trusty uh, '63 Strat, which we just call Blondie, just because it's a blonde Strat. <laughs> Nothing too scientific there, but I just got it refretted. So if you haven't seen that refret video, to me it was fascinating. I think like to uh, to all you true tried and true guitar nerds, uh, I just I like watching stuff like that. So it, it plays like a dream now. So that's one of, that's my favorite guitar that I own. Everyone needs at least one good acoustic, and the one that I found that worked best for me was the Martin uh, HD28 man. I just I, I grew up in an old southern style bluegrass church and uh, everyone played Martins except for my dad he played this really cool Yari from Alvarez and it was his guitar sounded fantastic but I pretty much just remember seeing you know everyone playing Martins and then uh, the most recent acquisition and we might be going on a guitar safari here soon. Let me get this out of the way. Sorry. There's probably like fancier ways to do this type of video, but uh, I just ain't gonna do that. We're hanging out. This is what we do. The old Firebird. Six, man, 63 just, just made, made some good stuff. So 63, Firebird 3. I, I like the dots. I don't know why. All right, gang, I think that is going to be it for us here at the studio, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. One of the big things that I've learned here uh, is to get my hair out of my face. From having these different studios, which I've been fortunate enough to have different versions of a home studio, is I enjoy having a studio the most that is out of the house, but the other one was a little bit too far away. Even being a 10-15 minute car ride away, a lot of times you're inspired to write a song, it would kind of dissipate by the time that I got to the studio. So I'm kind of like, man, you know, what? That, to me the ideal situation is a home studio that is in some kind of building that is detached from the house because it is a little bit hard to draw that line between work and just kind of like playing for fun when it's all in the same room. So I think that would be the final kind of like, the final uh, goal for me is to have 
a standalone building on a property. So maybe one day when we buy a house, that might be an option. For now, I think this one's gonna get by just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it bluesy, unplugged Les Paul style, which sounds like... Oh. Got it. Bye, homies. Woo!